Welcome back to the channel, guys. Now, I know we are in the middle of covering the Carroll County Sheriff's Department out in Georgia. However, I have some sad news to bring to you. Deputy Taylor Bristow of the Carroll County Sheriff's Department and who was detached to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation has passed away. Earlier in the week, Deputy Bristow was serving an arrest warrant in regards to child exploitation where Deputy Bristow suffered a gunshot wound to the head. He was airlifted to a hospital in Atlanta where he underwent surgery and later succumbed to his injuries and unfortunately he lost his life. The subject that was wanted for the warrant turned the weapon on himself and took his life. Deputy Taylor Bristow was 30 years old. He leaves behind his wife and two kids. Deputy Bristow was a father, he was a husband, he was a hero, and he's going to be missed. My thoughts and prayers go out to his family and his extended family at the Carroll County Sheriff's Department. I know you guys are grieving right now. So with that, I'd like to put those episodes on pause, and I know you guys would agree with me. Uh, let's give the Carroll County Sheriff's Department some time to grieve and go through this process of laying to rest one of their own. If you'd like to donate to Deputy Bristow's family to help maybe offset some financial costs that they're gonna incur due to his untimely death, I'm gonna put a link down below where you guys can go and click. This is directly from the Carroll County Sheriff's uh, Facebook. So if you'd like to click the link, I'm sure his family would greatly appreciate it. I wanna send my deepest condolences to his family. May he rest in peace and may they know that he died a hero. Why this is happening? He came from us, 49 of uh, 207. He's stolen. Now it'll be in a pit maneuver here. You see it crashing wow. to the guard. Right. in a crisis and I'm not talking about just slapping on a tourniquet but I'm talking about managing other life-threatening injuries more importantly can you treat your partner solo and keep them alive for five minutes until help arrives these are questions that you have to ask yourself Liberty Tactics and Training solo trauma course is designed specifically for officers and first responders in just one intense day you'll learn how to integrate tactical medicine into your operations whether you're on routine patrol dealing with a motor vehicle accident or facing an ambush You'll be prepared for everything from mass casualty incidents, SWAT scenarios, and even routine calls that take a turn for the worse. Learn to treat yourself and your partners until medics arrive. Led by Special Operations Combat Medics, Liberty Tactics and Training Solutions offer real-world scenario-based training. Upon completion, students will have earned their NAEMT, TECC, Law Enforcement Officer, and First Responder certification. Don't wait until it's too late. Equip yourself with the skills it takes to save lives. Enroll today and be ready for any situation. Spots are limited, so secure your spot today. They have a course coming up Monday, October 28th at the Broward College Institute of Public Safety. Check the description below and I'll have the registration link there. See you guys at the course. Welcome back to another episode of Police Vlogs, where we go around the nation checking out different agencies and what they have to offer. Today, we have a channel favorite, a fan favorite, the Florida Highway Patrol Criminal Interdiction Unit. We're gonna try something different. We're gonna shorten up the episodes and put them out more frequently so we can have more than just one episode a month, because that's where I'm at right now, about one episode a month. I'd like to get to one episode a week. It's a long shot, but a guy can dream. During this shift, the team was a part of a task force which included the Miami Gardens Auto Theft Unit. This task force was assigned to patrol the high crime areas of Miami Gardens to stop vehicles that match bolos and hopefully take violent offenders off the streets. Time for, um, trying to catch up with uh, traffic. Uh, they're approaching. 
On our way in, Trooper Alvarez is made aware of a stolen vehicle that has already rammed several Broward Sheriff's deputies. The incident happens to be taking place just south of us, so Trooper Alvarez heads that way to assist. Ralph, we appear to, we see the picture, but we lost your audio for a sec, but we can see what you're showing us uh, loud and clear here. Any idea why this is happening? It came from us right here at uh, North in our city on 49 uh, 207, bro. That the vehicle may be stolen, and now we're seeing a pit maneuver here. You see it crashing wow. into the guardrail there. They're doing it there. Uh, they're going to, we're trying to figure out how many people are occupying the vehicle. So, very quickly, we want to warn our viewers that this is live video. It's okay, I see the helicopter. All right. You see the edge of the 27? Yeah. They're going to surround the vehicle there. They're going to pitch it in right now. They'll be coming out with their weapons drawn, as you would expect right there, and you've got it happening right there. <laughs> Hey, he's getting off on the other side. Of a police pursuit uh, in which a pit maneuver was performed. This van was broken. Clutch, clutch, clutch. These are the troubles one like sure. this. Sure. And, uh, and now he'll, he'll hug the ground here in just a second. Clutch, clutch. Clutch, clutch. But so far, it seems like this person is complying. Right, so, so what we had was we had a pursuit that came down the highway. They were following a vehicle. That's the way to start a video right there. Absolutely. <laughs> that's correct. That's uh, roofing company and that's how it takes high water. In this stop, Trooper Botello runs the scooter's tag and it comes back stolen. He takes the traffic stop and he takes the subject into custody. During his investigation where he compares the tag and the VIN that's on the scooter, it reveals that the tag is actually stolen, but the scooter is not reported stolen. Also, search incident to the arrest, the subject had in his possession what appeared to be narcotics. Now, this little doohickey is a lifesaver. It's called TrueNarc. It's a handheld narcotics analyzer. Now, prior to this, you would have to send narcotics to a lab to test it and then later get results. This machine allows you to test the narcotics right there in the field and get actual results back. Not only that, you don't have to remove the substance from the plastic. It can test it directly through the plastic and according to the website, it could test it directly through glass as well. So that means less exposure to the officer. Once you scan it, it identifies more than 530 different types of narcotics. Now, like I said before, this thing is literally a lifesaver, not only with the time it takes to test a substance, but it could be an actual lifesaver as we've seen across the nation with the fentanyl crisis that our officers are dealing with out there and being exposed to them, and in some instances, almost losing their life. When I saw this thing in action live, my mind was blown and I was like, I have to take a moment and explain how awesome this device is. So to the makers of TrueNARC, two thumbs up. X-Ray Papa Hotel 56, Mike, X-Ray Papa Hotel. As I said in the beginning of the video, this task force was focused on finding those violent offenders, so they had a couple workups in the area. One of the subjects supposedly frequented the area on a motorcycle, and one of the undercover officers had an eyeball on the subject at the gas station. 
199 and 37. There he goes. All right, he's moving. All right, so he's, he's going to be going, going this way. He's going to come out this way. So, uh, 199. 199. Aviation, you on? 17, 14. I'm looking right at you, brother. When you when I uh, Miami Gardens uh, detectives had uh, eyes on a federal fugitive on a motorcycle at a gas station on 37 and 199. The motorcycle became mobile. They attempted a traffic stop. The subject fled. I became lead. I attempted to overtake the motorcycle. 
Uh, the motorcycle continued to flee. Shortly after, he came into one of the communities uh, in the area and bailed out, dumped the bike. We set up a quick perimeter where canines were deployed. Uh, canines were tracking from the actual site of the motorcycle towards a dead end. As the canine was tracking simultaneously, the subject came out and surrendered towards two law enforcement here in the perimeter. Uh, subject was taken into custody uh, for the federal warrants and pending other charges. The subject was wanted for a fugitive warrant and he was wanted by the U.S. Marshals for tying up his girlfriend and beating her so bad that she almost died. So this is a violent subject and thanks to their teamwork and efforts, they are able to take this subject off the street and put him into jail. <laughs> Stop. Pick it up now. Hey, get out. Get out of the car. We're going to leave it right there, but when we come back, we're going to finish this call and check some of this out. Stay with me. We're going to try to increase these amount of episodes we put out during the month. Hopefully get to that one a week. This next episode is going to be scheduled for next Wednesday. So stay tuned next Wednesday. Turn on your alarms and notifications as we try to pump these episodes out more frequently. With that, guys, if you'd like to, again, donate to Deputy Bristow's family, check out the link down below. With that being said, I'll see you when I see you. And if I don't see you, well, then I'll see you. Try to catch me howling at the moon